What is up, everybody? Mr. Purtis here. Welcome to Unit 3.3. We're talking about the Industrial Revolution Society. This is our third video in the Industrial Revolution. The first one was on the causes of the Industrial Revolution. The second one was on the Industrial Revolution and new technologies. This one is on the Industrial Revolution and society. When we say society, we just mean people, jobs, interaction, those type of things. So let's just hop right into this today. First thing we got going on here is social class changes. Oh, I'm having a little trouble there. Social class changes. So the social class structure that exists pre-industrial revolution in countries that industrialize is going to significantly change post-industrial revolution. And we have a whole bunch of new like social classes, basically, or groups of people who didn't exist prior and now do. First one is obviously the factory owners. These capitalists, that's the fancy word that we use. Um, capital refers to money and these people who are going to invest in these businesses and become factory owners and make a lot of money become what we call the new rich. They are but in prior to this, the most people who were rich were hereditary, meaning that it got passed down from generation to generation like nobles. Now we have this new group of people who are factory owners who are the new rich. Um, they're going to attempt to compete with the old rich people who were the nobles. And we see kind of this old school money, which are the nobles and the new school money, which are the factory owners, and they're going to kind of butt heads at times um, and try and show off their wealth and power. We also have a new group of people called the middle class. Most people today, probably a lot of people today refer to themselves as middle class, especially in the United States. Um, this class of people did not really exist for the most part. Um, it was not a huge class of people prior to the Industrial Revolution, but we're talking factory owners, entrepreneurs, which refers to people who are trying to invent new products, create new things. Um, this middle class people, they have a lot of money and a lot of time on their hands. They aren't doing what the factory workers are doing, which is working these extremely long hours, which we'll get to in a second. They also have time for leisure activities. So we're going to see during this time period um, a rise in, for example, professional sports. So at, towards the end of the Industrial Revolution, you were going to see in Europe um, the rise of professional soccer clubs, or as they would call them, their football clubs. We're going to see the start of baseball in the United States, um, the rise of um, football in the United States. So we're going to see these sports where people are going to pay to go watch, and they can pay to watch now because they're not working on a farm for 12 hours a day. They have time, they have the money to do these things, and their kids are going to be able to go to school. That's the good side of stuff, right? So we got new people, new wealth. We got a new group of people who have time to do things. Then we have the other side of things, which are the people who are actually working in these factories, which we refer to as the working class. These are factory employees. They are people in the factories working day to day. And as we talked about in class, the conditions and the hours are horrifically awful. It is a horrible time, especially for the first two thirds of the industrial revolution period. Um, we're talking 6 a.m. To, to 9 p.m. workdays, um, which if you're not good at math, that's a 15 hour workday. You're working six days per week. And if you really start adding those up and doing the math, that's like a 90 hour work week. That's double, more than double the normal work week today in the United States. Um, you're going to get two quick breaks to eat, uh, usually 30 minutes. Sometimes it could be an hour. So there's really, you're working a lot. There's no safety standards. There's pollute, like if you're working in a textile factory, for example, with cotton, there's no ventilation to pull that cotton out. You're not wearing masks. You're breathing these, these particles and the things in the factory in, which is really bad. It's going to lead to increased death, tuberculosis, um, lung disease, things that didn't exist before because these people are breathing it in. Also, there's poor pay that we're talking very low pay for these jobs um, in the United States. You might have talked about it. This, they're gonna, these jobs are mainly going to be done by people who are coming from uh, Europe. So recent immigrants, um, Italian, Irish are going to be working these in the factories. And like I said, the conditions are horrible. There's, there's stories of women getting their hair caught in machines, um, kids getting fingers chopped off in machines. And it's one of those like if you don't want to work, you just you, you leave. You're done. There's no insurance. There's no suing. Um, and most significantly with this working class, we have children, we have little kids working in the factory, we have little kids working in the coal mine, things that you are not allowed to happen today where um, if you need working papers, for example, um, to work as a high school student, and that means that you are physically able to and your parents agree to it. Back then, you just go. And the mentality of the working class parent was at the time, well, when we lived on the farm, my kid worked all day with me on the farm. Why shouldn't they go to get a job um, at the age of six working in a factory? which is a very different mindset than we have today. So um, like I said, we have new social class changes, factory owners, middle class, working class. One last piece to this is we also have what is called urbanization. Urban refers to city and urbanization refers to growth in city. So there are some good things about living in the city. I'll go positive first. 
you have it's no different than today. If you go to New York City for a day, for a night, for a weekend, there's reasons why you go there. You go to see concerts, you go to Broadway, you go to see a sporting event, you go to walk around and shop, whatever the case might be. That is no different back then than it was today. People, the, the city provides more activities, more nightlife, more engagement. You can go to theaters, museums, all that stuff. That's a great thing about cities. And people like to live near cities because of this. Also, there's more job opportunities. The negatives of this, and especially during this time, is we have a ton of pollution. There's no pollution standards on factories, on dumping things. There's no toilets yet, especially early on. Um, we got horses everywhere, and it's just a lot of nastiness. Also, we're all in tenements. We have this overcrowded housing issue. So people are packed together in very tight spaces, which also leads to a lack of sanitation um, and an increase in crime as a result. So these things are all going to come up. And this map right here, this was on the Regents a couple of years ago. This is 1701. This is population density. So how many people live in a specific area? And the darker the color, the more people live. And you can see 1701. There's a couple city areas, but for the most part, it's pretty spread out. And then by the time you get to 1911 in England, you can see these major areas, London, Manchester. Um, so these these areas are going to get much tighter. So that's what I got. We have urbanization, growth in cities, and these new social classes that are going to exist. Short and sweet today. You got any questions, you let me know. I'm out.